Welcome to BTC Racing and after a three week break it's time to get back on track and we're better than Thruxton here in Hampshire. This is a circuit that the drivers love. Why? Well it's the fastest on the calendar. It provides some unique challenges and the characteristics produce some fantastic racing. Chrissy, how would you describe Thruxton? Uh, scary. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's only, uh, it's my first time coming here last year and I had a lot to learn and uh, just been out doing FP1 and uh, yeah, it's very, very fast, very, you know, you're on the edge and uh, the car's moving about all the time. So I'm still learning and I'm looking forward to FP2 now. What's the biggest challenge going to be, do you think? Um, just carrying that speed through through the high speed stuff you know I mean I'm still a good few temps off out the back um, so I do really need to just get my head down and, and try and try and get my head together and go through them corners a bit quicker. You looking forward to it? Yeah unbelievably yeah, I think all of our three cars are looking really good this weekend so just got to keep the momentum going try and keep on the black stuff and uh, see if we can gain some good points in the Jack Sears. It's fast as you can see by my hair it's windy uh, it's 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 an awesome circuit. I, I came here when I was 13 years old. Um, every Thursday, I got permission from the headmaster and housemaster at school to to leave and come around here on a Lotus lease. And I absolutely love this track. It, it's uh, it's not only fast. It's got big curves. It's undulating. Um, not as much as your Not Kills and your Alton Parks, but there's for sure um, interesting dips on high speed corners, a bit like Church and. Uh, Getting the car set up for the slow speed and the high speed together is absolutely key because it's a bit of a compromise on, on both. But free practice one and two is done and dusted here at Thruxton. Um, two cars in the top ten, is that a good starting point? Oh, I think it's fantastic. And I think uh, if you look at Michael's time and what he's just done, I think that's all right, isn't it? He's got himself right up there. Tom was pretty happy and Josh after the rebuild can't ask for any more can we? I mean every, obviously the guys as we know have worked incredibly hard putting the the cars back together as we let Tom be put back into the garage there but it's always difficult this circuit isn't it to get that optimum set up and, and everything that you need. It is and and the, the the main thing with it is to come here and get a balance that they're confident with which helps it helps with the confidence for them and for us because obviously the one thing that you don't want is it to be really leery out there because it, they're all high speed corners but Michael's just proved that he, you know, he's got the credentials to do it and he? he's gone P5 or 6 or whatever it is and that was his first real effort of doing it so I'm really happy, really happy. Tom, we're just preparing for qualifying. What's your thoughts going into it? Yeah, positive. Um, you know, we've been top 10 all day. Um, just then I was P9 and FP2, but I was the fastest of the non-new tyre runners. Uh, a lot of people out there ran new tyres. Um, I'm trying to be smart and save mine for the race because around here I've, I've noticed in the past it doesn't really matter too much where you qualify because if your tyres go off a cliff, you just go backwards so quickly. So I, I sort of protect my tyres, look after them. And uh, now that we are trying our hardest now to get a good qualifying set up on the car. But like I said, I'm more focused on the race around here. This is a difficult circuit, isn't it? Those curbs are quite high. As you say, managing tyres is key. Is that going to be the story of the race, tyres, do you think? Tyres is always a massive part around Thruxton. I mean, Goodyear have done a fantastic job with a hard tyre. It really does hold on well. Uh, I don't think we'll be touch wood seeing any tyre failures. Uh, it's a very good tyre, um, but still there's a big drop off between your fastest lap and your last lap. So um, still getting the ultimate set up to, to manage uh, the whole race and being quick on the low speed corners as the tyres go off, but not too much oversteer on the high speed corners is key. This wind's awesome. Let's go kite flying. <laughs> What's going to be key to getting that quick lap? Uh, getting everything right, getting the tyres coming at the right time, the right pressures, right temperatures, and ultimately the balance in the car needs to be right. 
uh, and a gust of wind in the right direction when you start needing a bit of help uh, will definitely help us up the straight as well. Quick word with Josh before you get underway. Josh, what are your thoughts going into this qualifying session? How are you looking? Uh, I mean, it's not pretty comfortable. Uh, it's been too fairly steady session. Uh, but who knows? You know, obviously the dynamics car has been quick. Uh, obviously Jake has been quick as well, Jake Hill. So it's just going to be a case of finding a bit of space, getting a tiny lap together because it is so on the edge. But it's um, the mega lap, that's for sure. Traditionally, you go well around here, don't you, as well? You know, you've been victorious here on your last three visits. So fingers crossed. Yeah, obviously historically it's been good. Uh, everybody's obviously taken a step forward. You know, we've developed a bit further. Uh, but we've just got to see how we get on, you know, it's a long day tomorrow, but we just need to be in a, in a good position to uh, give us a best shank. Good luck, Josh. We'll leave you to it. Good luck. Josh Cook, who we were just talking to, is the lap record holder here. Remember, lap records can only be set in races. There are these unofficial qualifying lap records, but in terms of a proper, genuine lap record, Josh Cook a 116.5. That's given a great toe to Chilton on this lap as well. So there through goes Josh Cook to go fastest, 115.8, then Rory Butcher goes quicker, 115.6, out comes the flag, so the session at an end. Tom Chilton, seventh from the championship leader Colin Turkington, Michael Kreese, a great ninth, and Josh Cook rounds out the top ten. What a result in qualifying, what did you have for breakfast? Oh, I don't know, just been getting quicker and quicker every time, and uh, I just sort of had to suck it in and... and uh, collect it all together out the back where it was quick but it's just a monkey off the back to know that I'm actually like in the top 10 in British touring car on outright pace on my own so that's a dream come true for me you know just to be up, up fighting with them boys is really uh, amazing achievement for us and the team. Every week you just get quicker and quicker and more confident you're just adapting to this so well. Yeah I mean we still don't know how good we are yet I mean you know we're just still getting better and uh, we just got to keep plugging away. Um, I've still got to focus on the Jack Sears. I'd love, to, you know, P9. I'd love to start going forward and try and start, you know, going for the podiums. But we've got to remember this year that we're here to race for the Jack Sears and can't take any uh, unnecessary risks. And uh, good day tomorrow. I sleep well tonight. <laughs> Save of the day. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate all the support. Tom, that was a really tight qualifying session. It was indeed. Yeah, it was. Uh... It was great to get out on new tyres again and go flat out and uh, it was nice having Michael behind me and uh, we're going like a train around the circuit and I pushed as hard as I possibly could. I had nothing left in it. Um, so much so I just went wide flat and six through church. Um, but I just, uh, I gave everything I possibly had and, and P6 is great, you know, it's a great place to start. It's actually my best qualifying so far this year in this car um, and uh, shows me we've got a good car now in the high speed corners. So. We now need to work on from that and uh, have a good race tomorrow. I'm excited about racing because I think we've got a really good race set up, almost better than the uh, qualifying setup. So I'm excited about that. Well done, Michael. Cheers, mate. Yeah. 2-9. Yeah, highest and qualifying. Feel, balance. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, FP2 went well and it sort of gave me the confidence having a new tyre run. So I knew what to expect in qualifying. And we went for a bit of data after I'd done that and uh, with Danny and Josh and, and, and Tom and just realised that I could carry a bit more speed through a few certain corners, which uh, which I went out and done straight away and put a banker lap in, and it was 15, uh, 8 came up, and then uh, after that I was I was like, you know, just chipping away, and then I sort of got blocked on one lap, and then the next lap I uh, I thought I'd get a bit of space myself and found the time on my own, so that's it's good. Brilliant, mate. It's great. I, I love this circuit, as you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the car was fantastic, yeah. and uh, we worked very hard through FP1 and FP2 with my Imagineer over here. I think we made. We've done yeah. how many changes today? <laughs> <laughs> we've made about 30 changes. <laughs> 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 but we, we engineered our way to the to the front, and yeah. it, it, it's our best qualifying we've had all year. Yeah. And it shows it, you know. We've got you know, guys worked hard back at the factory, and um, and we've worked really hard today. And I couldn't have got any more out of it. I know that. No, really. um, I think for next time, I think we could uh, do a, a little bit more of a tweak on the rear end yeah. uh, to increase the grip. But other than that, I would say uh, she she was, was the best we could get out of it um, sure. today anyway. And there's a race car for tomorrow. Happy with well, the morning. I mean, I did, I did all of FP1 and FP2 on the same set of tyres. Yeah. And, uh, 
24 laps, which is um, obviously four more over what we normally do in the race. And uh, I, I did, I think, a relatively fast lap time at the end. And the balance, more importantly, was really good. My setup's a little bit different to his, but I think you know, for me, I was quick in, quicker than Tom in the slower speed stuff. Um, so, and I think you know that's going to be key tomorrow because the pace is going to come back to us out the back anyway. So. Brilliant. How do you manage the situation? You're dealing with athletes because racing drivers are athletes. When that pressure is on, the stress levels change completely. How do you manage that? I think it really helps when you've been there yourself and you understand when to step in and when to step back. And there are times, especially, like we all know, that no matter how much I want to get involved and step in, uh, you know that the adrenaline is running high at that point uh, and you have to you know, step back and, and wait and use that sort of wise ahead. Uh, just to judge, uh, just to judge timings, I guess is uh, the obvious answer. You mentioned you're working with Josh. Um, he's an integral part of the BTC racing team. Um, how happy are you when you see the developments that he is making? Oh, it's insane. You know, the, the feeling that you get is of one of self-satisfaction, but also just uh, that you know that you're helping contribute. To, uh, to something that um, is so you know, high up in, the, in the, their, their goals and dreams. And especially with Josh, you know, he works incredibly hard behind the scenes uh, with the team, with the car, uh, on himself. Uh, but just to add those last little bits, uh, as I said, uh, just whether it be uh, a line change on, on the circuit, you know, gear advice, uh, free weekend prep, whatever it is, however small, but then to see it pay off, Oh, it means the world. It's awesome, honestly. It's like you're in the car yourself. Is this something that, you know, you look at drivers from, that have had maybe several years in the industry and they've not had anyone mentor them effectively because that's, that's some part of what you do. How important is it for them to recognise that that is, a, that is a need these days? Well, yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, to be honest, the, 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 the coaching and the mentoring, management, call it as you, whatever you will, is, is going more and more, you know. For example, on the coaching side, if you go to any track day in the UK now and there's 100 cars uh, in the pit lane, 80 of those cars will have coaches working with those customers. Um, and that's the level of, of understanding that to get or oh, to shortcut the learning uh, and to, uh, to take the next step, I need help. Uh, and I think uh, those astute drivers, you really get it. And it's not a case of, like, for example, working with, with Josh Cook. Um, uh, you know, it's very minimal in terms of the you know, um, a little bit of performance uh, assistance, a little bit of uh, you know, pre-weekend preparation, a bit of fitness uh, advice, and uh, you know, the, the rest you know, the, the athlete or the driver puts in themselves. You know, you, and that's what you want to see. It's just there, uh, just to guide them on that last step. you achieved the objective for that race you went out there saying well you know you wanted the points that was what was important but you also had a really solid run how do you feel yeah I mean uh, it's probably the easiest race I've ever had <laughs> after the first lap and it all settled down I just sat behind Josh and just going through the motions really every lap and uh, they said like you know we had the pace because we didn't overdo our tyres I knew it's a tyre game around here so I just sat there and sat there and just you know I knew that I was leading the jacks here and just clicking gears and, uh, and and just kept it on the black stuff we knew we had pace towards the end um, 
but there was no point switching me and Josh to, to have a go at Oliphant, really. How was the car balance? Were you happy with it? Yeah, really good. Feels exactly the same, which is good, because going from qualifying, you want a car that feels relatively same. And uh, yeah, so same again in race two, get the reverse grid pole, and uh, we'll see what happens from then. But race one's done and dusted here at Thruxton. You started in the top 10, you finished in the top 10, no damage to the cars. Is that the best you could hope for? I think so. I really do think so. I think um, to bring three cars home in the top 10, round here, and Michael to finish 10th was meteoric. So I'm really pleased. What's the plan now for race two? To try and get ourselves in that top 10, keep in there somewhere, and try and uh, get reverse grid for the race three and see if we can score some bigger points. But no, to get free, free finish in the top 10 is good for BTC racing. The driver's happy? Yeah, I think so. Are they happy? I don't think they're ever happy. They want to go faster, don't they? But, you know, we have to think of the team and that's both of them have scored. We've scored good points for the team and that's what this is all about. It's a team game as well. Race two about to get underway here at um, Thruxton. What are your expectations for, for Creasy? Um, well, I believe he can uh, push forward now. Obviously, he had a top 10, 10th place in the first race. I think we can probably push forward there. We've got six kilos of ballast in. Uh, but there's no reason why we can't sort of run 8th to 10th and then try and get a reverse grid pole for race 3, that's the plan, so yeah. Did you make many changes before this one? No, just a few small changes. Michael was happy with the car, so yeah, like I said, put 6 kilos in a success ballast and see where we're at. How are you feeling? Yeah, good, good, I'm confident. I, I, like I said, I think, I think he had pace to push on, push forward, so we'll see what we got for this one. his teammate Josh Cook who wasn't happy after the first race what progress can he make in the second Tom Oliphant is all over the back of Rory Butcher yeah, amazing you see cars taking that inside curb at Allard I mean that was a, a curb you always stayed away from because the car was on tippy toes around that corner but these cars they've really adapted well slightly wider tyre now so they have more mechanical grip as uh, Tom Chilton who loves this place even though he's never won here heads into the chicane he wants a win here he says more than anywhere else he's fending off Cook Crease comes next ATC trade places do they not fly Chilton fends off the challenge of Josh Cook. Yeah, it's every uh, team manager's worst nightmare, this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine Bert Taylor watching this with his uh, bobble hat over his eyes. <laughs> Chilton versus Cook with the satellite car of Michael Kreese right there behind them. And Josh, the lap record holder here, is hustling on. A winner for the last three visits. He wants to try and maintain that record. Ingram leads, Camish chases, it's two out of two for Tom Ingram. It seems obvious that Josh is having a few gremlins this weekend. Um, was that the best he could do today? Um, I think that's the best we've done so far. We found uh, some improvements from where we were in qualifying and everything's getting a bit better now. Frustrating though, isn't it? Because um, you don't want gremlins, especially on a circuit like this. No, I don't think we do. I think we've had too many gremlins this year so far, but we're we're chasing them out of the car now after a big rebuild. We've done a lot of parts changes to get the car as best it can be. And I think we're there now. If we get the luck of the reverse grid, I think we're in with a chance. Final race of the day here at Thruxton and you're going to be starting on the front row. I oh, know, it's great, isn't it? We've, we've had two sevenths today. I was thinking if I got another seventh, then I could, you know, might as well change my race number to Creasy's triple seven. But, you know, we, we lucked out with the reverse grid there. Uh, it's fantastic that Josh and I are both on the front row. It's great for the team. Uh, gutted they didn't pick a, a ball slightly lower so we could have all three of us in one, two, three. But um, it's going to be exciting. You know, me and Josh were racing just then. We're very close in lap times. It's going to be very, very competitive. It's all going to be down to the start, I'm pretty sure, because overtaking is not impossible around here. Um, so, yeah, it's all about the start. It's a really difficult track, this, isn't it, as well? So when we get to the final race, it's always quite frantic. Oh, it is, yeah. It's, it's always frantic. It's, um, it's, it's a fantastic racetrack, this, though. It's high speed. It's, you know, as much as it, it may look frantic on the outside in the car, I'm very calm and relaxed, trying to feel everything from the tyre and, and what the road's given me grip-wise. Uh, but, you know, me and Josh can be pushing very hard. We're in a bit different positions in the championship. I'm really going for the championship. So, you know, obviously, I have to keep that in mind. 
and hopefully my teammate knows that too. But um, either way, we're going to be going flat out because we want the win. And Thruxton's the only circuit I've not won at, so I really want the win. You now we've had issues with with the brake system. The guys have been doing what they can, just making our way through. Obviously, you know that last race was the only time I've had something that kind of resembled a proper brake pedal. Um, so that's a start. But yeah, I'm just not used to struggling this much at, uh, at Thruxton. Um, you know, we're lacking in, in pace. You know, we're much slower than we were when we were here previously. So just trying to work out what's changed, understand why and uh, try and rectify it for the, for the last race. How much more important is it to have the confidence in the car on a fast track like this? Uh, if you're nervous of the track, I think it's important to have confidence. But obviously I've done so many laps around here now and I'm so comfortable with, with what to do. Um, you just got to go out there on lap one and just drive as you think the car should be driven around here or how I know you need to drive a car around here and if it sticks it sticks if it doesn't you've got to then adjust you know moving forward in the race so it's going to be a tough one it's going to be a fairly uh, exciting race I'd have thought because if we haven't got the pace I'll uh, definitely be uh, get my elbows knees legs everything out to uh, stop cars coming past well, you're starting on the front row for this one because obviously the reverse grid puts you in pole position. So as you say, it's going to be it's going to be challenging, isn't it? Yep. I mean, it's never easy, but um, with the pace we've got today, it's definitely going to be challenging. So, like I said, we, we'd, we're making some setup changes. We've been in this position before. You know, the first time we came back in 2019 with BTC Racing, we struggled race one and race two really badly, and um, we just uh, fired in a completely uh, different setup change for race three and the car was on fire so let's hope that happens again drivers look to the gantry like to go red who is going to get the best start as we go racing good start by Tom Oliver to BMW from the third on the grid but not quite good enough to get between the Hondas Josh Cooper and Tom Chilton slots into second as they round out after the first time Max Sutton's away nicely as well as he tries to work his way through the traffic on the way up towards the complex for the first time dust is kicked up Ingram is late on the brakes on the outside. Rory Butcher very late on the brakes to try to get third and he does so ahead of Oliver. And now he challenges for second. But it's Josh Cook who leads on that one. Chilton chasing Cook. Cook, Matt Taylor and his merry men be on for a 1-2 here. What can Chilton do about Cook for the race lead? 6-0-2 in the second at the start of this lap. It's gone up fractionally as you see as they come towards the chicane. Josh Cook hustles the car out of the corner up towards the timing line. Chilton to the eye close but is it close enough to think about being able to make the move but it has come down a little bit more. there is the leader Josh Cook Tom Chilton dropping away in second spot so it's a second and a half between those two Michael Kreese under attack from Turkington which gives Matt Neal a little bit more breathing space Jake Hill is the man that rounds out the top ten Michael Kreese has he got a puncture a puncture yeah goes straight on can't turn the only puncture of the touring car races are Jake Hill in the first which was due to contact Josh Cook in the BTC races Honda has had a pretty horrible season thus far, but he's about to come through to score the race win, accelerates up towards the timing line, and Josh Cook with a flash of the lights wins at Thruxton. It's a 1 2 for BTC Racing. Tom Chilton takes second, third Rory Butcher. But you can breathe a sigh of relief now. Yeah, of course. So it's, I mean, um, where, where do you start? I mean, we've been up and down and the roller coaster's gone round and we've stuck at it and I think ultimately the result, they both, Tom and Josh and Michael between Colin and Matt Neal, two British touring car champions, drove it easily. Unfortunately he's got a puncher at the end but what a drive, what a weekend to end on after the pure of the last three weeks or four weeks. I'm sure you'll enjoy the celebrations. A one-two today for the guys. Um, everyone's celebrating in the garage. Great to see. It is fantastic. I'm so pleased for all of them. They've worked so hard and it's this is what it's all about, isn't it? That's what we come for. You know, it would be the second one this season, but it's not, it's our first and we have to make the most of that. So now we're over the moon. I'm really pleased for Josh and for Tom, really solid. Such a shame for Michael right there the last lap having to um, having to deal with a puncture and a misfire. So, you know, he's had a great weekend and he's um, he certainly earned his stars this weekend.
Josh, many congratulations. I mean, from the off, it just seemed as if you were completely in the lead right at the very beginning. Did you remember the race? Yeah, I did. Um, I literally, obviously, got the reverse grid, which we needed. And I sat on the start line as we rolled out the pits. And as I pulled up onto my marker, look up, and I can't see the start lights whatsoever. And I thought, this is just my luck. No repeats or anything. I, had to, I literally had to crouch down. And my head, and you won't see it, but my head was just like on the steering wheel as I'm looking up. And God knows how I got a start. I don't even know if it was any good because all my perceptions were out. But it's, it must have been all right. Um, well, from where we were watching, it looked like the perfect start. Yeah, maybe I'll do them all like that. Um, but I just what an emotional roller coaster of a day. You know, a weekend. It's been tough so far. And it's easy to cruise around when things are going well, when you've got a quick car. But when things aren't going well and you're struggling for pace, just every single position is a huge battle. Just maintaining position is a huge battle. And that's what it's been like today. Um, the guys have just been relentless with how much they've done to the car. Uh, so huge credit to them. Tom, many congratulations. I know you wanted that win here. You said you hadn't won at Thruxton. So um, to take the second step on the podium, third time last Last time out, second now, collecting points is important. Absolutely, it was a fantastic race. Josh drove really well. Um, I was holding myself back, to be honest, thinking I might get him at the end of the race, but I accidentally uh, clipped a little bit too much of the uh, tire wall, trying to straight line the chicane as much as possible, and it damaged my front left, so that was my fault. Um, and uh, I actually damaged it, damaged it so much that the steering was massively off, huge vibration, and I was worried I was actually going to have a puncture. So the last sort of five laps, I really backed off. And then to finish it off, I had a misfire at the end, so um, I had a tyre and engine problem at the very end and actually I'm just extremely happy to finish and it's all credit to the team, they've done a fantastic job with the car and you're right, I wanted the win because it's the only track I've not won at but a P2 is great, um, it's actually my highest finish here at Thruxton second and uh, I won here on Friday on a bicycle so you know, I'll take that. <laughs> it was great stuff, I mean the two of you got a perfect start didn't you? Absolutely, yeah we, we nailed it, it's fantastic to keep the real drive cars behind which doesn't ever happen let's be honest because real drive has more traction um, so obviously the balance performance with that's got a lot better for the starts um, and uh, you know it was a strong race and me and Josh did a qualifying lap every single lap to pull out a gap on everyone else behind. Well done. Thank you. Chrissy how would you describe that race? <laughs> yeah a bit of sweet I mean uh, best race I've ever driven in my life and uh, to finish with a puncher it was uh, gutted but it was a little bit self-induced because I tried to get the switch back on Matt Neal, I knew there was only one lap left and I was a lot quicker through turn one and turn two. So uh, I took a bit of extra curb and then that's when it went pop, so I got it, but I still won the Jack Sears, so over the moon. But how much fun was it, you know, pushing on the track in amongst those champions that were around you? Yeah, amazing, there she goes, in a great car, but uh, no, yeah, it was uh, great to have Matt Neal in front and Turkington behind, so uh, yeah, I'm up there with the, with the right people, aren't I? So I'm doing the same right. Feeling good? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just to come here and win the Jacks ears, you know, and, and extend my lead, so that's all I'm, I'm bothered about. So. Well done.